Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And today is Bug Out Bag 2021 and what you may want to have in your Bug Out Bag. Now, I do have a challenge for everybody before we get going on this. Once you see what I have in here, once I lay everything out and everything, I want you to comment on what you would add to your backpack. Now, the reason I want you guys to do this is, is because there's so many new people out there and there's so many people looking for information and everything else. And with everybody's knowledge out there, if you all do have your bug out bags and they're ready to go, you know, this way here, people can get an idea of what everybody else is really thinking. So if you see something that's not in my pack that you would like to have in the pack, comment below. And if you see something that you probably wouldn't, you know, take or you wouldn't find useful for your bug out bag, put that in the comments. You could take that out and put something else in. Now, the whole key to this thing is, is you want to keep this under 20% of your total body weight. So I'm like 241 pounds and we're going to do a demonstration here in just a few minutes and I'm going to show you the weight. So you'll see me get weighed and I'm going to put the pack on and you're going to see what the difference is. This pack, I've whittled it down from 48 pounds. I had it at the max and that was just too much. I put it on for over an hour, walked around, went walk for walk and everything else and it gets very heavy. So I've whittled it down to about 34 pounds or just under, somewhere, give or take. You'll see here in just a second. All right. And I put in here the things that I would want to have in my bug out bag in case of SHTF or in case of an emergency. Man, me, I had this pack with me. I broke down. I've got a hike out of the woods. I've got everything that I need in here. Plain and simple. So let's get started on this. Don't forget to comment and put it in the comments below what you would add to your pack why you would add that. So let's get going on this. We're gonna do the weigh in real quick and then we'll get going on the backpack. All right, folks, I'm gonna step on here. All right, 241.4. Now we're gonna save that. Put on the backpack and I'll be right back. Okay, folks. We got the backpack on. Let's step on the scale now. Two seventy four six, which will be a difference of so my backpack weighs thirty three point two pounds. Okay, so you, as you all saw, 33.2 pounds. That's how much this pack weighs. Fully loaded out. It's missing one thing. But we'll get to that in just a few minutes. And that's going to push me right to about my 15%. All right, right now I'm under 15%. But once I add one thing that we're going to cover here in a second, that's going to put me just a little over 15%. So that's not too bad. I've knocked this thing down from 48 pounds to 33.2 and I'm gonna add 4.4 to it, and I'm gonna explain why here in just a minute. So let's get going on this video. You all ready to dive into this pack? I believe you are. So we're gonna start off right on the top. All right, the first thing I have right on the top here, I'm gonna take off these two straps right here, is my solar power, okay? I have that right on here with my carabiner, which holds it right in place and everything else, because this, this is a 24 watt system, <clears throat> it's a raft power. I've used this thing. I've done re reviews on this and I can leave it just like this and dangle this right off my pack exactly like that. Right in here you have all your attachments so you can charge your cell phone if you had a GPS system, uh, whatever you may need to charge, flashlights, any of that kind of stuff and make sure that you're good to go. So that's attached right to the top right here with these carabiners. Now these carabiners are the extra strong carabiners. They'll hold up to uh, the, the rock climbing uh, carabiners, so they have a very, very high weight, uh, right around 2,700 pounds they'll hold. Gloves and a hat, all right? Always make sure you got gloves and a hat. First thing right on the list, all right? On the sides here, you see that I do have a hatchet, all right? On this side here, I have a folding bandsaw, all right? Now, this little compartment on the side right here, I'm not going to open all this stuff up and show everybody everything because um, you're not going to be able to see it. Okay, this is folks, so I took everything out of the pack and everything is on the table with the exception of what's in this pouch right here. This is basically just your toiletries and things of that nature. All right, so this way here, 
all you have in here is your toiletries. You have your soap, you have toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, deodorant, baby powder, wipes, so on and so forth. That kind of stuff is all in this pouch right here. That's all that's there. So as right. far as a safety aspect when it comes to your go bag, you also have to remember there's certain things I can't show or talk about on YouTube here. So you all know what I'm talking about. That may be something that you want to make sure that you do have in your go bag. If anything else, you can always go and pick yourself up some mace or maybe a stun gun or something like that. And this way here, you have some protection along your travels wherever you may be headed. Just remember that, folks. You know, make sure that you have something to protect yourself. That's all that's there. All right. This, this bottom pouch here is just some more fire starting stuff and, and that kind of stuff. I don't think you can have enough. This way you're always covered. You always have enough. I do have my clothes that I vacuum sealed. Okay. Now, what I did was in this vacuum sealed bag, I used my vacuum sealer that I used to do all my food and stuff with. All right. I took my clothes. There's a pair of pants in here. There's two shirts, two pairs of socks and two pairs of underwear. And I vacuum sealed these bad boys down. They're waterproof now. So say something happened that this was on top in your pack, all right? You had to pull some stuff out. It's pouring down rain. You got to set up camp wherever you had to figure out where you could set everything up if you couldn't find a building or something of that nature in a SHTF type situation. Your clothes are going to stay dry. You take them out, you can throw them on the ground. It doesn't matter. They're going to stay nice and dry. You always have dry clothes and everything else until you open this thing up. But then you want to try, if you wanted to, take a lighter or something and try to reseal it. So to cut it as close to the seam as you probably could and then take a lighter and try to reseal it on the fly. This way here, it still stays waterproof. The trick to having your clothes and stuff is, is the little pouch that's right here on your back. You want to put that in there and you want to put, make sure that's against your back. Not all backpacks have the nice padding and stuff on the back. This 60 liter pack doesn't. My 120 liter packs do. Now this is the smallest pack in my arsenal, so we're going with this one here. <clears throat> so let's just move right on down the line. We're going to talk about uh, some first aid. Now in one of these mole packs that I do on here, I have four mole packs on here. I do have in this waterproof bag all my first aid stuff that I hopefully would need. Now it's not like my huge first aid kit that I do have that I've done several videos on, um, but this will get me through and hopefully take care of any situations that I do run across. If it is a SHTF situation, you have to be very mindful of what's going on and what you're doing and everything else because you may only have a small type of an emergency kit. So that's just something you really want to pay attention to, folks. You want to make sure that you have a mask. Now, everybody should have masks nowadays, right? Because we just came out of Charlie Victor 19. But this is a different type of mask. This mask here, you can buy the filters and you can put these filters right in this right slot right here. All right. And what happens is, say it's a smoky situation, say you're around fires or something like that's burning, or say it's dust, sand, whatever it could be. This way here, you can put this mask on and you're not breathing in all that crap and everything else and making yourself either sick, hard to breathe or anything else. So you want to make sure you do have a good mask. In this little compartment right here is a towel. All right, having some type of a towel. So if you had to wash up in a stream or something, dry off, uh, if you got wet during a rainstorm or something like that, one of these little towels is uh, priceless, okay? You can get these at Walmart, they're like 12 bucks. And it's a really big towel, but it folds up right into this little compartment, believe it or not. All right, let's move on down the line. Let's talk fire starters, all right? This here is nothing but cotton balls, with Vaseline on them. You soak the whole cotton ball in Vaseline. You use your fire rod, all right? You pull it apart, you spark the inside, it'll light. These things will burn for quite a while. You can get a fire going, all right? Fat wood. Now, down here in the south, it's very hard to find fat wood, at least down here in Florida. And I know other parts like Texas and stuff, they don't have fat wood either. You have to have pine trees to get fat wood, but you can buy the fat wood just about anywhere. You can get them online, uh, I actually, I've seen them in Walmart. So all you have to do is use your knife. You take and shave off some of this. You make yourself a knife pile. Use your fire rod and a few sparks. And next thing you know, you have fire. So if you can't get a fire going between this and this with your waterproof matches, you could use those. Your Bic lighter, never leave home without a Bic lighter. Always have a Bic lighter and waterproof matches. You can have them in this. You can buy them like this, whatever you want to do. Make sure you have some way to sharpen your knife, your hatchet, your saws, anything else 
you know, make sure that you have a stone that you can do that with. These are small, compact, and they have everything that you need on it from the leather to the rod on the side and everything else. They're very sturdy and they do work. They sharpen just about anything. Having a good flashlight and everything, make sure that you have a flashlight in your go bag. Um, I may even put in a headlamp, um, but right now I have a nice, sturdy, solid steel flashlight that will take a beating. A map of your area, folks. This is very important, okay? It's, if it is an SHTF type situation and say you were traveling or trying to get away and something happened, your car broke down, blah, blah, blah. You know, having a map of your area so you can at least get out of your vicinity. You know, you can pick these up. This is a state map, all right? The whole state is on here. So you can try to figure out exactly where you are and where you need to be. All right, <clears throat> moving on down the line. Like I mentioned, make sure that you do have a good knife, something that is really nice. It makes sure it's a thick blade so you could use this if you had to chop up wood, split wood, anything of that nature. Um, if you did end up, uh, say, uh, catching or killing an animal of any type for food, then you have some way to clean it. You know, fish, this kind of way, you know, you got to have a good knife. Don't have just a little dinky knife. A multi-tool, all right, priceless having a multi-tool right in the rain now you'd use this i mean you could take and you could have information already written down in this in your go bag this way here that you know if it, this gets wet it's not going to run you can still read it and everything else you could also leave notes for people if somebody was coming up behind you you knew that they were coming say it was part of your group or part of your family or whatever else and you could tell them which way you were headed these keys all right these keys will start over 500 different pieces of equipment. Now, it is not illegal to have these keys. You can buy these right on Amazon. They're going to run you about 30 bucks. Keep the paper, though, all right, unless you have a very good memory and put it inside of a, a bag or something so it stays waterproof and everything else because this tells you exactly what all these keys are and what they start, and they start just about any piece of heavy equipment. Now, this here is a shut off and turn on valve for water spigots. Now you know how some places, you know, especially businesses and things, if they have a water spigot outside, they always take the handle off so nobody can go up back there and turn the water on and help themselves. All right, if you have one of these tools, you can go back there and help yourself. You can turn the water on, it'll turn on any type of a spigot with this tool right here. You can get these on Amazon also. Having glow sticks. Now these are green. All right, so say you needed to set up camp and you didn't want to use flashlights, a headlamp or something else because you didn't want to alarm. You don't want to give your position away, folks. So you want to use something that's low light and everything else. Now, just the opposite, if you want to get the red, the yellow, um, the orange and that type of stuff, and if you want to be found, then you can buy those. That way you can break these open, wave these like a madman so somebody can see you at nighttime so they can find you. So you have two different options here with glow sticks. And glow sticks are very cheap. You can buy them. Uh, you can get them in, in the dollar store sometimes. They have them in there. All right, cordage. Cordage of any kind, all right, is very important. You don't know if you may have to build a shelter. If you found a place where you're going to end up staying for a while, maybe you need to repair something, hold something together, whatever else. So having some good bank line cordage and everything else is essential. You can't have enough folks and make sure that you're buying some good quality, either bank line or cordage, something that's high string like this one right here. This is a 750 pound test. All right. So this is going to hold some weight. All right. So you got to make sure that you have some good cordage because you don't know what you're going to run into. Now, Sawyer Mini. Do I need to say anything else? Your Sawyer Mini is so very important. All right. You can filter out 100,000 gallons of water. It comes, when you buy the kit at Walmart for 20 bucks, it comes with the, the plunger to clean everything out and everything else. It does come with a small little pouch in here. So if you did filter some water or you can fill this up and filter water, whichever way you wish to do it. So th this way here, you, if you run across a nice moving stream somewhere and you need to replenish your water, you have a way to do it or to get a drink. Now to go along with your Sawyer Mini, this is where I'm gonna be adding weight to my backpack. All right, this is a two liter bag, all right? Now, one liter is 2.2 pounds. So this is, well, if once I fill this up with water, it's gonna add 4.4 pounds to my pack. That's already 33.2. 
So now I'm at 37.6 pounds. I'm still under the 20% and a hair over the 15%. I can live with that. All right, like I said, I did take 10 pound, over 10 pounds out of this pack by just trying to break things down and make things lighter. Now, you can do whatever it is you wish to do. Now, you're going to have to have some way to either cook, boil water for all different types of situations and scenarios, such as your freeze-dried foods that you see right here. I have biscuits and gravy, I have chili mac, I have a beef stroganoff, and just regular scrambled eggs. Now, these three pouches here is two servings, and this one is only one. So, you could either do one or two things here. If you were in a situation where you needed to ration your food, all right, you can get seven days out of this. If you're just in a situation where you know within three to four days you're going to be to a safe place where you can have food and water and everything else, then you get a meal in the morning and a meal at night. So you get two meals a day and then one meal on the last day. So for the first three days, you're going to get two meals a day and then on the last day you're only going to get one or however you want to do it vice versa so it's just something to think about you know you can ration these things down and they are lightweight these things weigh like 4.8 ounces compared to i did have some canned goods a couple of canned goods in my pack but those things weigh so much compared to having your freeze-dried foods and you can pick these the the mountain house uh, they do have some other brands right at Walmart. They run between eight and 10 bucks. If you have extra money, pick up a few just to put into your backpack. You know, this way here, you're prepared. I'm just saying, folks, you got to have food. You got to have some way to make sure that you can survive. Now we're going to move over here. This is my sleep system. Now, a lot of this doesn't really weigh a lot. You may think it does, but it doesn't. The heaviest thing is the tarp. Now, this is a full tarp, uh, 10 by 12, all right? So it's a 10 by 12 tarp, it's camo. So if I need to set up a shelter or something in an SHTF situation, I'd try to find a location in the woods somewhere where there was a lot of high grass, brush and everything else where I could set this up low to the ground, not having a string way up in the air and set it low to the ground. And this way here, I can be off the ground, which I think in any type of a situ survival situation is key. That's why I would always go with a hammock this way here, you're off the ground. This does have a screen, so the bugs aren't going to be on you. And with having the tarp, you're going to stay dry, which is very, very important. Now, I put in a couple of luxuries. This here, you unravel this little bad boy. You blow it up. It's a mattress that fits inside the hammock. All right, so you get a little bit of comfort. And it helps give you a barrier between underneath. And if it gets cold or something, it gives you that barrier so you're not just you're freezing to death because your back is right against say just the canvas of the hammock now i do have a sleeping bag here all right so if you take and you have your sleeping bag and you have your mattress all right it's going to give you a nice barrier and you're going to try to you'll stay a lot warmer than if you didn't have anything this little bad boy here is just a pillow a little luxury no reason you can't have something like that i bring my own steaks yes you can make your own you don't have to bring your own you can make your own steaks and stuff right out in the woods just by using a piece of wood it has a nice little L notch on it, and this way here you could tie off your tarps and stuff so they're not flapping all around, making a lot of noise or bringing any attention to your area. Now, the one thing else I want to talk about is this survival shelter. Now, this survival shack is made for two people. It is a 8x5 survival shack. As you can see, it almost looks like a tent. Now, what I would use this for, because if it is an SHTF situation, this bright, shiny little thing here, as you can see, it gives a little reflection. All right, it's going to give your whole, your campsite, your stealth site, and everything else away. But if you did have a sleep system like this and say you were cold or anything else, nobody's going to see you because you're going to be low to the ground. You can use this to wrap your body in. All right, it's going to help conserve the heat so hypothermia doesn't set in, which hypothermia is a big killer. So if you got wet or something or it's cold and anything else and say you couldn't get a fire going or something, if you could wrap yourself in this, get yourself off the ground with your sleeping bag and stuff, more than likely you're going to deter the hypothermia that could set in that could eventually kill you even if you have all these supplies. Because in the end, the hypothermia will destroy your body and make it just shut down. 
So you don't want to be in one of those type of situations. So just to run this down real quick, this is what goes into my go bag. This is things that I have in here, things that I would like to have in my go bag. Now, if you do have things that you would like to throw in your go bag or you have stuff in your go bag that is different, put them in the comments below. Don't forget, folks, because this way here, everybody that is watching this video or is in this community and everything else, say they're just starting to build their own go bags and they can get a lot of different ideas on what to put in there because a lot of people need guidance to get this done. Now, as I did say, this is something that's very important to be prepared because when the disaster strikes, folks, it's too late to prepare. The time is now. The time to do all this type of prepping between your go bag, your food, your water, your whole situation, your medical is now before the next disaster strikes and then it is too late. And that's what I'm trying to avoid by doing all the videos that I do to keep you all safe in a time of chaos. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to really thank everybody for watching this video. Make sure you share it with your friends and family. Share it with anybody that you can, your social media, however you want. Make sure that you're sharing this so this information gets out so people will get the message to be prepared because once the disaster is knocking on the door, it's too late. Time is up. Till next time, catch you all on the flip side. Mm -hmm.